Are you looking to grow revenues, increase profitability, or obtain financing? If so, you came to the right place. Running a business is all about leadership. How do you become a better leader? Learn from the successful entrepreneurs and business owners how to lead your organization more effectively. That's why we created Leadership Live at 805, Talking Small Business, to help you succeed with your host, Andrew Frazier, business growth pro and CFO and founder of the Small Business Pro University. Every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're joined by experienced entrepreneurs and business owners who share their secrets to success via live stream. Also, every Friday morning, we release a new podcast episode. Either way, you will learn about developing your business leadership skills from our roster of highly performing guest experts. Leadership Live is one of the many valuable resources provided through the Small Business Pro University, empowering business owners to learn, profit, and grow. Find out more at sbprou.com. Good evening, and welcome back to Leadership Live at 805. I'm your host, Andrew Frazier. Excited to be hanging out with you one more Tuesday evening. Um, as you know, each week we have a great guest and a great topic. And this week, like all others, I'm very excited to have our guest for this evening. Um, tonight, our topic's going to be a little different than usual. A lot of times we cover marketing and sales because that's your most important job as a business owner, but it's not your only job. And one of the biggest challenges many business owners face is, you know, once you sold, marketed and sold something, you have to deliver on it, not just deliver it on it, deliver on it consistently. And I'm going to be talking to my guest who's really been delivering on what he's promised and what he, what his company and organization does successfully for many years. And he's got a great format. Uh, um, he's got processes and procedures, and uh, we can learn a lot from him. So I'm excited about having um, having him on today. So today's guest is Rick Delarada, and um, not only is he today's guest and um, done great things with his organization, he's also a very accomplished um, jazz musician and um, probably known worldwide. Um, so you, you may have heard heard of him or you may have just heard him uh, without knowing it was him. So, uh, hey, Rick, glad to have you on the show. Excited to chat with you this evening. Thank you so much, Andrew. Great to be here. Okay, excellent. So, you know, your organization, Jazz for Peace, I, I was really excited about getting a chance to meet you and we chatted about what you're doing and um, really like what you're doing, but not just what you're doing, but how you're able to consistently do it. Um, you know, mo many organizations have trouble being able to do things consistently over the long term. And you've done it for, for many years successfully. So definitely look forward to digging into that. But you know, before we do that, um, you know, if you could take a few minutes to chat a little bit about your journey. And, um, you know, Rick has his piano here. So he might play us a, a few um tunes during the show as well so stay tuned all right rick tell us a little bit of yeah so you know uh basically um my story is you know mostly that of a musician uh you know i studied all forms of music grew up in a musical household and uh you know started working professionally at a very young age um, which led me all the way into, uh, you know, a music conservatory where I studied classical music. I studied uh, jazz and I played in all kinds of bands, pop bands and rock bands and funk bands and soul bands and, you know, commercial bands and uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, that led me into, you know, studio music and all, all the kinds of things that musicians do uh, following their path. And um, then that led to my own recordings uh, as a band leader, you know, CDs of, of my own, uh, because due to the fact that I was a composer, a pianist and a vocalist and combining all those in my into my own uh, act or my own show or whatever uh, was really an exciting challenge. And uh, seven CDs uh, were, you know, 
came and you know were, were produced and recorded and all that stuff. But the big change for me happened uh, right on the day of 9/11 when I wrote a poem. Uh, I called the poem "Jazz for Peace," and um, the words came out to me due to the fact that I was watching the events of 9/11 right from my, the rooftop of my building, less than a quarter of a mile away. And so uh, powerful words came out in the form of a poem. And I've been trying to live up to that poem, to the words of that poem ever since. Um, so it was just a magical opportunity for me to be able to look at words on a page and say, wow, let me strive to live up to this, these words for a day or two or three. And that's led to 20 years of it. Uh, and by living up to those words has been um, you know, a magical journey where I've been able to make a difference for outstanding causes, uh, combining my interest uh, in world-class jazz and world-class arts and culture with a fundraising model that I developed that um, helps to benefit outstanding causes. And through that is the opportunity today to show you how small businesses have um, benefited from Jazz for Peace, from the Benefit Concert Series and other aspects of it, including an educational program and an instrument donation program. And uh, it's really just done wonders for so many small businesses around the world. So I'm excited to you know, be able to talk to you guys about this today. Okay, great. Appreciate the, the intro and um, you know, definitely, you know, want to talk more about your jazz for peace you've been doing this for for 20 years and um I, I was impressed when you shared how many organizations you like your program have gone through your program um but before we um do that we should talk a little bit about what is your program so there's it's multifaceted so let right. me let, tell me if i, I get it right um mm -hmm. uh, so you know what you're doing with Jazz for Peace is you're really um, create a, a platform to help organizations um, that are grassroots be more successful in delivering upon their mission by helping them develop a jazz related fundraiser and managing the um, all the programming around it. So it becomes a major event that's successful with sponsors and really- And many organization. sponsors are small business. Many sponsors <laughs> are, yeah. So that's something that I wanted to make sure your listeners know, uh, like you don't have to be the grant recipient to be involved in Jazz for Peace in a big way. So in other words, um, the one of the very first things we do with a grant, for, well, first and foremost, I noticed quickly on that outstanding causes that are helping our world are very similar to performing artists and that they all need a list of things. And those things are number one. Uh, and this is if you ever talk to any um, outstanding cause, Andrew, that you'll, you'll, you'll hear them say yes to all of these things. Number one, you want to expand your donor base. Okay. And if you're a small business, you want to expand your, your customer base. Am I right? Yes, 100%. Okay, so there we go. So these are the synergies that I'm talking about. Um, so now, not only do you want to do that, but also if you are an outstanding cause, you have supporters already because you've been doing great things. You have a wonderful mission and you've got people who you know want to see you do well. If you're a small business, you also have customers already because you probably have a pro, you know, you have a product, you have a business, you have uh, something that you do uh, in the community as a business. And so you have customers already, you want to expand it, but you already have them. Well, you want to, uh, uh, you want to reward those customers and keep them rejuvenated, keep them involved, keep them interested in what you're doing. Same as an outstanding cause you want to reward those volunteers and those board members and those donors. Uh, you know, you, you want to keep them rejuvenated and excited about being continuing to, to be a part of, of your, you know, of, of your nonprofit or your charity or whatever you're doing. So these are both synergies. Uh, we call that the roots of the tree and it's an empowerment tree. That's the fundraising model. And 
with with those roots, what we do with an outstanding cause is we basically um, turn them on. Usually it's someone from the outstanding cause that finds out about Jazz for Peace. They might watch this podcast and say, wow, I have an outstanding cause. I watch this. I check some other things out on your website. I want to find out if you can help us. So from there, we will create something that they can now share about what we want to do for them with their other supporters, people like that. Okay. Now they get those people interested. Those are the roots of the tree, them and their closest uh, board members, supporters, all of that. Okay. Those are the roots. And what we want to do, we're going to make them all VIP guests of honor at this event. So that's part of the rejuvenation of them, making them feel great. It's the same thing if, if you're an out, uh, if you're a small business, we're going to, a small business that comes on board, we make, we give them VIP tickets so that they can gift those out to their top customers and bring these customers in and reward them. Hey, what am I doing? How did you get me into this thing? Hey buddy, you've been a great, uh, you've been a great, you know, um, uh, supporter of, uh, you've been a great customer. You've been a great client. And I want, I wanted to say thank you. Oh man, thank you. you know. So you know what I mean. That's that's the kind of thing we're trying to do for a small business who's involved in a jazz for peace event. If they're involved as a as a charity, like mm -hmm. as I just said, we're now getting those board members and all of them. We're getting them excited and having a great opportunity to be a VIP guest of honor at this event. We have a VIP room where they'll go and have a meet and greet. Same with the sponsors and the sponsors' clients and all that. They're all in this having a great time at this meet and greet and getting things from our sponsors, which are, you know, it could be food, it could be beverages, it could be gifts, all those kinds of things. I'm there, you know, meet and greet with the artist, all that kind of stuff. You can see videos of it, by the way. People like to watch one that we did in uh, Brazil of me, you know, just, you know, just jo joking around with everybody, like, you know, like you're supposed to do. Just making okay. sure we're having a good time. So now- Rick, one, one quick before, sure. as you're going, you know, uh -huh. one of the things that uh, you have a process. So, like you, right. you know, the one thing that's great is you 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 do it consistently. And right, rinse and repeat, you, Andrew. And which is which is great, but you know, the first step in your process, I believe, is choosing the right organization. So, um, how do you choose the parameters, and and how have you, uh, you know? how did you determine what the right type of organization? Cause it, you know, you want, you got to start off right to end, right? Right. So what, what's some of your criteria? And how well, you know, you the best way for us to choose a, a great organization is for the organization to choose us. You follow me? So in other words, the more you know about us, the more you can see how we can make a difference for you. So that's a big plus for us. If an organization knows a lot about us and knows what we do and how we do it, now we can talk to them on a playing field where they are understanding what we do. We're understanding how we can help them. And now we're really uh, getting into the nitty gritty of can we make a profoundly positive difference in your wonderful uh, cause, you see what I mean? Okay, and and that's a great example of you know generally as any type of business needs to have a target market, and who's the you know the perfect client right. for what they're doing? Who's most likely to benefit the most from what you're doing? Yeah, and, and you know, Andrew, it's actually them knowing more. The more they know about us the faster we're able to get to that, you know, get to that conclusion. And we learn, most of the stuff we learned, we learned it on the fly, helping other outstanding causes. And the one I told you now, we mm -hmm. learned from the Red Cross because we got a phone call once from the Red, from, we got a phone call from an organization that was talking to us about us. In other words, a lot of people think, Gee, the best way for me to get involved with a foundation is call them up and tell them all about me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I would think the same thing. It's just that's the way we think. That's the way we're programmed. This, this, this call we got one day, a person called and started telling us about ourselves. Okay. And he's like, 
you know, I saw this thing you did in Africa. I saw this thing you did here. I saw this thing you did there. And we're, I'm with a couple of volunteers and we're like, who, after, after a while, you start to want to know who that person is that knows all this stuff because, wow, this is amazing. You know, this is like, and then we're like, look this guy up while we're talking because this is crazy that he knows all this stuff about us. And now we look him up and we find out this is somebody who has received more grants than we could ever imagine. Do you know what I mean? Than anybody, than any small, you know, any, any charity. I mean, this person is an expert at getting funding and grants and we're seeing how he's doing it because it got to the point where we're like, listen, we got to know who you are and how we can work with you. We, you know, because the more he's telling us about us, the more we're dying to like hope we can work with them. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now we want to pass that forward. So we want organizations to know, hey, reverse this, go do it, think completely backwards. Call up Jazz for Peace or even write us an email and make us feel like you know a lot about us because now we're like, wow, what you know about us, we can really, you know, now we can really talk about how we can make a difference for you. You know, without that knowledge, we can't do it. You see? I mean, that's the, actually, that's a great lesson in business as well, because, um, you know, one of the things I always talk about is, um, you know, um, talk to your customer, talk to yourself, because generally we talk about things we want to hear. Um, not necessarily what our customer wants to hear. Right. But it works much better if you talk about what they want to hear or what they're interested in. Um, so, and it usually does. that's them. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so, um, so, so definitely um, that, that probably an eye opening moment. Uh, it was eye opening. It really was because we were like, we couldn't wait to start talking about how we could do something, you know, really great together after that, knowing that that person knew so much about us and now was going to be able, we were able to move so fast in the process. You see what I mean? Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So, you know, definitely you've had a lot of successes, but you've probably had some challenges as well, learning some lessons. For what, sure. what are some of the key lessons that you, you've learned as far as, um, you know, setting up your systems and processes? You know, what mostly what we do is similar to what I just told you, just passing that information forward. So we see people all the time, like basically snip, slipping on a banana peel that we already slipped on. You know what I mean? Because we've done so many events. So we already we already slipped on that. So. Uh, it, what, what we hope is that people will say, Hey, let me keep an open mind and see if we can dodge some of the pitfalls, you know, because no matter what you're doing, you're always going to have adversity. So there's no sense in, um, you know, there's no sense in bringing unnecessary adversity if you can avoid uh, a mistake. And so, you know, we just, as we made them, we learned our less, we tried to learn and try to adapt and try to learn from mistakes. And then again, pass that forward. And so it's always nice when an outstanding cause is like, wow, thanks for telling us, you know, let's, let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. Or let's, let's see if we can avoid that little uh, slip up that, or that potential slip up. Great. Great. So before we get too far in, um, wanted to take a second. I have a new video that, um, we just created, finished editing today, um, for the small business pro network community that we're putting together for entrepreneurs and business owners. So we're going to take a minute to do that. And then I'll be back talking with R small business with Rick and really going into a little bit more detail about the great things he's been doing and, you know, how, we can learn from, from what he's doing. Um, here we go. What's the ultimate business ecosystem for helping entrepreneurs to accelerate and grow their businesses? Of course, it's the Small Business Pro Network. I gotta say, I'm glad I trusted you with your plan because it, uh, and, I, and I like the plan, but we are, you know, there's no guarantees and it, it is a journey, but we're getting there and we're making real, real solid progress. Uh, Andrew helped me with the growth plan for my business. 
and also in the financial side. So we're able to get、uh, loans. I thought it was great. Good,、uh, practical information uh, that uh, is good for both entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs. Uh, and uh, you know, Andrew breaks it down in a very understandable way. You need someone that's going to tell you how to get things done, how to move your business forward, how how you can run your business like a pro. I've known Andrew for ten years, but when we started working together, I got to see the master's mind, and he's been helping me with my financials, making sure everything's together, what's working versus what's not working in my business, so that I'm working on my business and not in my business. Period. Join the Small Business Pro Network to learn from the experts, collaborate with like-minded entrepreneurs, and access valuable resources for growth. Hello, I'm Andrew Frazier. My mission is to help one million and eight business owners by 2028 to sell more, make more, and get financing. I've worked with more than 1,000 business owners one-on-one, helping them to grow revenue. Increase profit and obtain financing. I created the Small Business Pro Network to help you achieve your goals faster and easier. Join before Labor Day to become a charter member for free. Visit www.sbpronetwork.com. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Okay. Welcome back.、Um, I'm here with Rick Delarada, and、um, we're talking small business. And he's been sharing a little bit about his Jazz for Peace program.、Uh, but before we go too far into it,、uh, we haven't heard any jazz yet. So you want to take a second and share a little jazz? He promised a little little taste of it now, and then sure, let's do it. To the end, you'll get a little bit more. Okay, that sounds good.、Uh, so you know what I'm going to do right now is.、Um, Because I'll tell you, jazz is a deep art form.、Uh, if you talk to anyone who really knows about jazz, they'll be like, "Wow, it's you know, it, it's go." And I, I'm kind of known for、uh, being able to somehow communicate that without you know being too far over people's heads or somehow hold their attention. So、uh, it's a challenge. And what I do sometimes is I'll just take a song that everybody knows and lead us into something. And I'm going to try to do that right now. This is actually,、uh, you know, just a song by the Beatles. It's called "The Long and Winding Road," and it's going to lead into a free improvisation that I'm going to make up. I don't even know what I'm going to play. I have no idea, but it's going to hopefully,、uh, you know,、um, be something. Hopefully, the, they'll complement each other. We'll soon find out, anyway. The long and winding road that leads to your door will never disappear. I've seen that road before. Needs me here. Lead me to your door. Many times I've been alone. Many times I've cried. But anyway, you'll never know the many ways I've tried. Still.
Outstanding. Thank you, Rick. Thanks for sharing. Uh, what a treat for, for all of us. Um, so definitely, you know, um, you know, you've been doing this for almost 20 years and really came out of 9-11 as a, a new vision, a new mission for what you're doing. Uh, so now, did you envision it becoming what you uh, what you've accomplished here? And you know, what was your, you know what what did you envision if it was different? And how did you go about getting started? Well, you know, here's the thing. I mean, uh, everything kind of led up, you know, sometimes they say luck is when preparation meets opportunity. I was extremely prepared when 9-11 hit and I got stuck with this poem, you know, because that's all I had to show for that day was a poem. Um, but as far as living up to the words of that poem, and actually maybe I'll, I'll do that for you later, you know, uh, so you can hear the words of the poem. But, um, you know, as far as living up to the words, I was very well prepared because I had, you know, traveled a lot around the world and met people of all different races and creeds and cultures and nationalities. And, and, and I saw the common thread of the arts and culture and music and its ability to reach people in profoundly positive ways and break through every single boundary that that uh, divides us. Music, um, you know, breaks through it, transcends it. So I was in that situation with that knowledge and I didn't know what to do. Like I said, I just had a poem. I didn't know what to do. The, the you know, the common sense next step turned out basically to be to read the poem, recite the poem. And I had a fortunate situation where I was a headliner at a major jazz festival uh, in Savannah, Georgia. And fortunately, the country opened up just before that took place. I mean, it was the, the, first, of, the first thing that happened when the country opened up is I went straight to the airport, got on an airplane and went down to this jazz festival where there were over 8,500 people uh, that got to hear the poem. So, you know, I'm in that situation. I mean, uh, you know, poor Edgar Allan Poe and those people, they would have given anything to be able to read a poem to 8,500 people. Uh, and here I was, you know, I, I, you know I'm a, I was a lyricist and a composer, uh, but I'd only written one poem. And here I was, you know, in a major uh, opportunity to recite it. Anyway, from there, it led to a concert where I had put it to music and performed jazz for peace. And then that led to articles coming out saying Delorada starts show out with jazz for peace. Um, even a preview article came out that they asked me to recite the poem and then the poem itself. Well, something that I said in the article went viral. Uh, I just said, you know, Hey, if we were to embrace our greatest, um, you know, our greatest, uh, uh things, you know, uh, creativity, artistry, intellectuality, things of that nature, we would have a better chance at avoiding the behavior that leads to destruction. That became a famous quote. So uh, eventually, you know, here I am with that and with that at that level now. And what do you do next? Well, I just started doing little concerts around New York, Jazz for Peace concerts, which led to a benefit concert series, which after I did a whole lot of them in New York, um, got the attention of the mayor at that time was Michael Bloomberg. And he wrote this big, you know, fantastic letter describing what I did and how he's been watching it and what he thinks of it and how he thinks it's such a great thing and I should keep going. And then I realized I had to expand it. And as I expanded it to other city, states and countries, I started to get more letters. You know, eventually in Chicago, I got a letter from Barack Obama uh, because I was doing something in his jurisdiction. And I realized that, you know, politicians ultimately are uh, public servants. And, you know, you can ask them to do something. And I would do that. I would ask people in different places where I went to, even countries, hey, you know, you got to come out in support of this organization. Check them out. They're a great organization and uh, they're in your jurisdiction. And they would agree. They would come out and, you know, write a letter or show up in person or, you know, attend and speak. And so, you know, people would offer their support because I asked them to. And so one thing just led to another, just led to another, to led to another. So it's kind of like, um, you know, I basically just uh, keep 
you know, try to keep a connection with our world and stay in tune and see what comes forward with, you know, my journey, see what comes forward for the next opportunity to make a difference. Wow. That, that's amazing. So it just started off with just being prepared for the opportunity. And there, there's, there's so many lessons in what you said. So maybe we take a minute to kind of chat about them. Just, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, you talked about, you know, being prepared, um, traveling, you know, getting to know people, connecting, performing. Um, and, you, you learn a lot of key things by doing that. What were you, would you say are the most important things that, you, that you've learned as part of your preparation that helped you be able to do Well, that? one of the things I learned that was important that I was, you know, getting back to small businesses is that a lot of wow. us are, there's a lot of synergy. If you look at an artist, if you look at an outstanding cause, if you look at a small business, you'll find every one of them, as we already mentioned, they need to thank and reward their supporter, their, their clients and all that. They need to grow their client base or their fan base if you're an artist or their donor base if you're an outstanding cause, okay? But then as you start, now, the, now those are the roots that we plant with every outstanding cause, whoever that is. Now you get into the branches of the tree and again, you see the same synergy. Uh, if, you're, if you're a bit local business, one thing you want to do is you want to network with other local businesses so that you guys can have a little support group. You can be a supporter. It's the same thing if you're an outstanding cause. If you're an outstanding cause, you want to have other local businesses knowing what you do and at least have some of them who are especially endeared by your mission. You know, same with uh, if you're a musical performer, you want the people in your city to know about your talent and your music. You want, you know, the people in the local. And that's like, we call that branch number two of the empowerment tree. And again, empowerment is so important because um, a lot of times people think, okay, you know, we'll get our hands on some money and everything will be all set. Well, not really. It's just money's just one piece of that puzzle. And you're not going to go very far with just a piece and not the rest with the, without those pieces missing. You know, you, you got to put the whole package together. And if you look at a tree, it's got that package. It's got a trunk. It's got roots. It's got major branches. It's got twigs. It's got, it's got a package of things. And that's what we're trying to build for a small business or whether it's a small business or it's a fellow artist or it's an outstanding cause. So as you go up that tree, right, what else do all three of these things need? How about publicity and awareness, right? You never have, I never met a business that says too many people know about us, forget it, we're close, you know, they never say that. Wow, wow, we wish we had more people that knew about our product. We wish we had more people that knew about our newest our newest rollout or our innovations or what we offer or what our store has, the, the diversity of things you can get or the specialty things, whatever it is. They want more publicity and awareness. So that's another branch. And, and it grows as you grow. In other words, one thing leads to another. Once you have that, those roots that I was telling you, now you have the kind of power behind you, you know, you've got the wind, you've got the wind to sail into that other branch. You know what I mean? To, to get those networking with your, with your, the people in your town. Then you, from there you can go to publicity and awareness because you have a buzz, you know, you've got a buzz going on in the town. So the publicity and awareness is great because the TV station or the radio station will say, you know, yeah, but we there's this thing that's just, oh, I heard about that from so and so. You know what I mean? Oh, wow, man, maybe we better cover this. In fact, maybe we, we better not even think about not covering it because right. that's what you want to create. You want to create a situation where instead of somebody thinking about doing it, they're thinking about the consequences of not doing it. You know, like, wait a minute, this could be bad for our station if we don't cover this and every and the whole town knows. You know what I mean? So those are the kinds of things you want to do. And as you go up that tree, you get to things like new and prestigious supporters, which is we realize, see, the mayor Bloomberg, when he came on as a new and prestigious supporter, we didn't really understand that that's a something that every outstanding cause needs. We saw this cause hitting an, a home run that we were doing this event for because the mayor came on board for that event. And then naturally that thinks, wow, wouldn't it be great if all of the all of the grant recipients got new and prestigious supporters from the Jazz Peace event? And the other thing, Andrew, is we learn a lot 
for you saying what you learn, we learn, you know how I was saying that we, we decide on the grant recipient based on the organization, what they tell us about what they know about us. That mm -hmm. helps us realize how that we can really work together with them and make a positive difference. It's the same thing with, um, with, with, uh, the, with what we learn, we learn a lot from the actual letters that we receive from the grant recipients because they would all write to us after and they would say something in their own words. And so in other words, that's how we, we learn from that a lot from those letters that we receive from them, how much it meant to them and, and, and how. Okay. And, and, you know, you're saying all these things like it's easy, but you know, you, you've got a lot of things layered there and a lot of complexity that goes into being able to make it look and sound easy. Um, right. And, right. And I think one of the key things that I'm take away is you create value for everybody at every step in the chain. Exactly. And as a business owner, as an individual, as an organization, People do things because you create value. They do things for themselves and for you based on the value that you can create for them. So, you know, when you talk about win-win, you're sort of like win-win-win-win-win-win-win, where everybody who participates, you've sort of orchestrated it so everybody's getting value out of it. Right. And what you mentioned, good point you mentioned, it's not easy. I mean, even though I'm making it look easy, you know, I mean, it's not easy. But here's one here's one little trick that we do. We create because we're not just trying to get our hands on a bunch of money, because if you're trying to get you, you're just doing one thing. You know what I mean? And you're going to win or lose. You're going to live or li uh, you're going to, you know, live or die on that hill. You know what I mean? That's not a hill to die on when you've got so many options that you to win at. So in other words, um, you know, you might find, uh, you might find a situation where you run into adversity with, um, you know, uh, one of those branches, you know, could be any one of them could be publicity, let's say, you know what I mean? Where maybe that branch isn't growing as big as you would like, but all of a sudden, uh, a new and prestigious supporter comes on and you're winning there. You know what I mean? So every tree, is different in the wild, in this forest, outside your backyard. Every tree is different. It's the same here. You know, there are some uh, organizations that have told us, you know, that yes, it was the, you know, it was the prestigious supporter that came on board that was, you know, all by itself, it was a home, made the event a home run. But others, you know, where we, you know, maybe grew a small little branch in that direction, we might have grown a huge branch just with a local business sponsor that turned out to be a lifelong supporter, you know? So you've got a lot of ways to win so that when you run into adversity, um, it's not, you know what I mean? It's, it's far from game over just because you hit a bump in the road. Okay. So definitely, definitely. You know, one other thing you had mentioned that, that, that I always love and talk to people about is, um, people did stuff because you asked them to. So if, if you don't ask, you don't get. Um, so definitely, um, you know, it, it's important to, to be able to do that. Um, you talked a little bit about Mary Bloomberg, but any other examples of things that happened that, you know, you didn't expect, but happened just because you asked or things you wish you'd asked for that you didn't ask for? Well, you know, there's so many. Uh, one that comes to mind right now because uh, we have people contacting us from Kenya, Africa. Uh, there's, there's, you know, we're, it's crazy because I know about things that you don't even see in the news. And I end up knowing what's going on because people contact me and talk to me. And I have musicians contacting me from, from Kenya right now. And they're sending me videos and they're sending me stuff. Uh, about uh, a lot of crazy stuff going on right there, right now, where there's uh, problems with a kind of an overthrow and they're attacking citizens and stuff like that. But, um, you know, an example is, uh, I my this is my second time. My first time going to Africa was Rwanda, which was an amazing event. You know, we could do a whole show on that. But my second time was to Kenya, and that was also amazing. And um, 
I was trying to get our volunteers to understand, listen, um, I don't care how impossible you think what we're trying to do is we are going to grow. We are going to do go through the motions on each one of those branches. And we got to new and prestigious supporters, which is branch number five. And uh, I had done some uh due diligence on the prime minister of that country. And I found out that he had been on the BBC and done an interview where he talked passionately about the Mara River and the indigenous Maasai people and the wildlife up there and how it needs to be, how much he cares about it and how much it needs to be addressed and preserved and sustained and nurtured and all these kinds of things. And here I was going out there to help a conservancy called the Empash Alorianito Conservancy Trust uh, to do all of these things. And, uh, you know, the, one of the volunteers hadn't really gone through because uh, she thought, geez, you know, the prime minister, what the heck is it? They never heard of Jasper Peace. How are they? That doesn't, that's not. I said, listen, we're going to go through the motions either way. And not only that, but I had done some due diligence on this prime minister. And if he was half of the things that he claims to be, he, this is going to relate to him. So anyway, sure enough, um, after the event, we get this letter from the prime minister. I'm so sorry this got to my desk laid up. This is amazing. I've been talking to people, what, what you, you know, and we have that letter. Anyway, I now have, uh, we're trying to find this guy now in, in um, he may have been kidnapped and no one's seen him. There's an uprising and uh, I'm working now to uh, try to, uh, you know, locate him because he really is a people. The people ab absolutely love this guy. And um, it's a kind of a serious issue that's going on there. But but that's an example of, of um, you know, what, what you're talking about, a thing where nobody really <laughs> thought the prime minister of the country would come out in support of Jazz for Peace. And how do you know? And, and like I said, I have a right to ask people. So I do. Again, with with all the things that we do, we have templates. So we have templates for you know, how am I going to get these local? Well, you know what we have? It worked. This is what worked for so and so. Try it. Let's give it a try. Okay. And a lot of times the power of jazz for peace, like the stuff we've already done, if you can get the guy to stop and just look at what we've done, he's going to be like, you know what? I should be taking this outstanding cause seriously because they're in my town. They're right down the street. And this jazz for peace thing, this is no, this isn't chopped liver over here. You know what I mean? They're standing behind them. Maybe I should be, you know, uh, taking a look at what they do as well. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense you know aiming high um making sure you ask um you mentioned templates yeah uh, for everything you do processes and procedures and you know one thing i was going to say is you know at the end of the day generally you're only as good as your team so um you know how, how did you assemble your team and how did you um develop them into um, the team and the organization that you have now? You know, we, um, there's this little thing we found it a long time ago. It's called Wufu. It's a form. It's uh, like a, some kind of a, a, a platform for forms and they call it Wufu document. Uh, I see them now. I see a lot of people using them. I think I've seen PayPal use them. I think I've seen other people use their company. Anyway, it's just a template form for we well we took it and we created a volunteer so when people came to volunteer or contacted us to volunteer and there are volunteer organizations too like volunteer match you know uh there that put volunteers idealist is another one anyway um these volunteers would fill out a form and we it would come to us and we would try to fit their talents and their passions with our needs and We've had hundreds of people come through and sometimes they even come back and, you know, they, they, we don't see them for a while. And then they, Hey, you know what, can I, can I come back to you guys? You know, can I have, I have some time free. Can I jump in again? And yeah, we're like, you know, so that's, that's kind of what we do. We just try to work with whoever, whoever's available and whoever wants to help out. And through that, we learn from them, you know, so sometimes we'll have a guy, we had a, a volunteer once said, what Jazz for Peace needs is fast facts, a list of fast facts. And people love taking like two minutes and just reading a bunch of fast facts about Jazz for Peace, reading about our United Nations event, you know, reading about the benefit concert series, et cetera, et cetera. 
Oh, no, that's that's. Um, I like that fast facts. Yeah. Uh, especially nowadays, you know, people have less and less time. To that's right. And one other thing I want to say, one other thing I do want to tell you, a third party is very helpful. So, you know, it might not be hard for me to like brag about myself or whatever, but if someone's talking for me, it's a lot, you know, you're more likely to listen to another person talking. So our templates speak for the organization and it's jazz for peace talking. So instead of the organization saying, would you guys please sponsor us? It's another, it's a third party. You see what I mean? They're looking at jazz for peace. Well, who is jazz for peace? Well, the more they look at jazz for peace, the better for them, for better for this outstanding cause. Cause they're going to say, wow, this jazz for peace. And they're telling us. So, you know what I mean? That third party, sometimes it's advocacy. It's that extra, you know, it's instead of the person always having to represent himself, you have somebody representing you. Yeah, it, it's it's basically a, a referral, right? Um, an ongoing referral, exactly. Um, which um, you know, generally the key to people buying something from you is they need to know you, like you, and trust you. And what can get them closer than a referral? someone else who knows you likes you and trusts you that they know like and trust so um you know that that's powerful for for what you're doing but just in business in general um if you can find ways to get referrals or partnerships that will refer you um you know that really allows you to have much greater success right and this is advocacy on every level so in other words we're your advocate to thank and reward and rejuvenate your customers. Let's just do it in a small business. You know, uh, thank, reward, and rejuvenate your customers. We're an advocate. You were your advocate. You have Jazz for Peace helping you thank them with this event as VIP guests of honor. Then expanding your uh your you know your customer base. You know, getting those some of those people will bring friends of theirs. Because they get wind, they look at the information, they're like, wow, I could bring my friends. They'll have a blast coming to here, going to VIP and the VIP room and, you know, uh, choice six, choice seats at the concert, yada, yada, you know, all that stuff. The, the, the red carpet, you know, people like a red carpet. So they bring their friends. Now you're, now they're meeting the business owner and now you're getting, you know, you're getting a personal meeting with those people. You're expanding your customer base. That person that came from a friend of your customers, he's going to come back to you because he knows you personally. Now he had a great time at that event. You know, there's like, you know, he could look at two other options and say, well, none of those options are this guy who I know personally, who my friend is a, you know, a loyal customer, that kind of thing. And then as you go forward, we're the advocate to help them uh, get other businesses involved as sponsors we're their advocate for publicity and awareness because it's not just our little fundraiser. It's our Jazz for Peace fundraiser. Jazz for Peace has often already performed in that town and already been on the news or whatever. And if they haven't, you know, we've performed in enough towns for that news agency to, to pay attention. So in other words, we're all the way up that empowerment tree. They have an advocate. Excellent. Excellent. So, yeah, I mean, definitely that that type of advocacy um, is, is powerful. So, you know, an hour goes really fast. So so we're, we're, we're coming up on it. But um, I definitely wanted to make sure of a couple things before we finished up. Um, you know, we've talked about a lot of great stuff, but people can only take remember usually up to three things. So. If, if you, you know, to leave people, you know, what are the three things that you, you want them to take away that they can take away and utilize to help them become better leaders and be more successful in leading their organization? Well, one thing I would like people to, to learn is that little trick that I told you if somebody learns something about someone um, and then talks to them about them instead of themselves first, um, that's just a great way to 
endear someone to you, you know? And what we do at Jazz for Peace is we simply ask people who know something about us to just send us an email. And our, our email address is just generic. It's info at jazzforpeace.org. So it's just info at J-A-Z-Z-F-O-R-P-E-A-C-E.org. And, you know, the whole thing can start just by them writing us a little email and saying, hey, anything they want, just from their own words, like, you know, I saw Andrew's show um, and uh, this looks like something that, you know, could help us. This is what we do or anything they want to say. We often can take that and make it a seedling to start growing that empowerment tree for you. The last thing I would want to say is that Jazz for Peace ultimately provides the way for those who have the will. So if you don't have the will, you know, we, there's not, there isn't anything we can do. But a lot of people out there, Andrew, they have the will and they just need the way. So that's what we're looking for. If you've got the will, we have the way to help you get from where you are now to where you need to be. Because, you know, not because I'm uh, David Copperfield, but oh, because I'm taking a world-class cultural event and I'm uniting it with a proven fund fundraising model. Okay. All right. Well, you, you covered some great stuff. Um, actually, your first one was actually three great points. So um, you talked about, you know, people should know something about who they're going to talk to. So that encompasses doing your research, preparation, right, and talking to your customer rather than yourself. And those are all critical things in, in success in business and in life. Um, I'm not, you're probably familiar with Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie? Yeah. Well, I think so. He's kind of like a, the historic figure. Is it related to Carnegie Hall? Um, well, no, he um, wrote the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And okay. Is, you know, I don't think yeah. he's that Carnegie. Okay, but he's a well-known name. Carnegie. I've heard that name, Dale Carnegie, but, yeah. But, uh, but he was around, he was a contemporary with Andrew Carnegie. Oh, okay. Um, but um, his leadership and um, communications and relationship building, um, you know, are basically the standard. So anyone who hasn't read How to Win Friends and Influence, by, Influence People by Dale Carnegie should. And, and these are some of the principles that he outlines in that. So um, definitely, um, you know, that, that is key. Um, and you know, you really covered a lot of things, even, even though what you do, um, is, isn't directly a for-profit business for yourself. It's still a business and you still face similar business challenges and, you know, you still have to provide value and, um, you know, you, you've done some great things, um, putting it together being able to do it with processes and procedures. So I, I'm excited to have had a chance to talk to you, learn more. Hopefully the audience has as well. We've gotten some good comments throughout the show and, um, you know, definitely have to have you back, have, have you back again. Uh, we do have a few minutes. If you, if you want to play something before we close out, uh, yeah, that's I think that, that, would be, that would be great. I'm just trying to think. Um, okay, so this is a song by, this is a, oh, all right, so now I'm gonna, I, that was a pop song I played before, as you know, the Beatles. Uh, this is actually a jazz song. It's a, um, it comes from a great uh, jazz vocalist from the old days named Billy Eckstein. Uh, believe it or not, there was a time in jazz where the two top singers in jazz were both named Billy. Uh, one was Billy Holiday, who I'm sure you know, and the other one was Billy Eckstein, who, uh, you know, anyone in jazz uh, would know him. Uh, so you had the two Billies, and um, he actually wrote this song uh, that I'm going to lead into, again, another free improvisation uh, that I'm just going to make up. Uh, and maybe I'll recite a little bit of the Jazz for Peace poem as well. 
so you could get a chance to hear some of that. Uh, but anyway, this piece is called um, I Want to Talk About You.
an intelligence that leads to reaching potential that we have in our souls. So we can raise our total conscience. see that the gift of giving is our greatest privilege. I hear jazz. for peace. Excellent. All right. So that's that's the that's the poem that started it all. <laughs> yeah. and I just I just improvised underneath it, but yeah, all, that, those are the words, and I just okay. I just Excellent. put whatever I, whatever came to my mind, I put underneath it. Okay, well, well, thanks so much for for sharing, um, both musically and um, you know, experience wise. Um, hang on for you for a few minutes while while I close out, and um, you know, we'll chat in a few minutes. Hey everybody, thanks again for tuning in. Um, definitely was great to have Rick on this evening and share some valuable insights about um, business as well as share um, share some musical talent as well with us as well. Um, you know, each week, um, appreciate you tuning in, coming back and um, commenting and participating. So um, definitely appreciate that and encourage you to continue to do that every Tuesday night. Um, it's been more than three years now and we've only not been totally live two weeks, but that one one week that was um, Valentine's Day and the other week that was July 4th. So I don't think, I wasn't excited about being here those days and I don't think I would have had any guests who were excited about being here those days as well. So, but um, look forward to next week. Um, next week, our guest is Randy McMillan and we're gonna talk about maximizing and prote protecting your in intellectual property um, he's actually head of um, business and legal affairs at Rock Nation, and you know he works with a, um, a lot of artists and really a lot of um, intellectual property. So um, looking forward to having him as a guest next week. And um, you know, just always remember: at the end of the day, the more that you know, the faster and more successfully your business is going to grow. Thank you for listening to Leadership Live at 805, Talking Small Business. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Leadership Live is one of the many valuable resources provided through the Small Business Pro University, empowering business owners to learn, profit, and grow. Find out more at sbprou.com.